We're live. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Mr. Biznut. Steve Hi. Barnes, welcome very much. Uh, thank you very much for joining Kathleen and I in this interview. Um, as you know, um, I've invited you to join us. Um, we want to interview you. I'm writing a book, um, Wake Up People, um, Grow Your Income, Keep Your Wealth, and Create the Lifestyle of Your Dreams. And Steve, I um, have come to know you over the last year or so, um, a little bit about you anyway, and I really admire uh, your financial astuteness. And um, I feel that you have so much to offer our viewers and the readers of my future book. And um, so I thank you so much for joining us on this interview. Well, thank you for having me. I'm kind of uh, kind of honored. I got to tell you, I think. Uh, an important lesson I learned from all of this is to take pride in yourself at all times. Uh, you know, always remember where you came from and who you are today, and remember where it is you want to go. So uh, that helps me drive uh, myself into the future with you, ladies, as a team, because I think it's wonderful the pride that I have for you and finding me as a guest and also as an interviewer. This is fantastic. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> we love having you. <laughs> We sure do. We sure do. And I like what you had to say because it is somewhat of a somewhat of a GPS type of a model. You need to know where you are, um, and you need to know where you're going. Um, and there needs to be a decision about where you're going um, so that you know how to go about getting there. And I definitely, I definitely see that um, in your financial walk, if you will. And I so appreciate that you allowed me a glimpse into your uh, finances. I am a CPA. I am a certified tax coach. So uh, your, your information is uh, safe and private with me. But I so appreciate you uh, being willing to come and share some of those uh, valuable nuggets that have helped um, you just traverse um, over the course of your life um, to uh, arrive at a real solid financial base. Um, would you mind giving us some background as regards to uh, where where did you get this wisdom from? <laughs> well, uh, to be honest, it's it's all from my dad. Uh, my dad came into my life when I was four years old. He's uh, he's a stepdad and a superhero and one of my very best friends in the universe. He's actually only 16 years older than me, so he really is kind of one of my best friends. So it's a unique relationship, and I think that was part of the the grease in the wheels that allowed him to approach me and teach the things that he that he had to offer me. Um, I can't really speak for what type of lifestyle my dad lived before I came along, but. I'll tell you that he's a, a wealth of knowledge of information all across the board on on all levels of everything. Finance is just one of the things that he taught me. But it was so appealing when I was a child. I listened and I absorbed everything. And I have to tell people that's the one thing you need to do. Besides what I said earlier, taking pride in yourself of who you are and where it is you're going in life. Take pride in the things that people are wanting to teach you. People are taking the time to give you information because they want to. And we talked about this a little bit earlier, but I want to be known as somebody who's there to help people just like both of you are, and I take a lot of pride in being that person. So my dad was that person to me, and that's where I got that one quality, you know, of taking the pride in who you are, teaching people. So where where that all came from, I mean, it started off really early, really, really early. Like I had some real values instilled on me at an early age, and I can remember being 13 years old, for example, getting my first job. It was picking up garbage, literally out of a parking lot, in front of a, uh, of a superstore type. You know, uh, where you can get uh, uh, medicine and you know, store bought goods and kind of like a small Walmart type thing. But I mean, I was getting pennies to the dollar compared to everybody else that had a job at that stage. And when I brought home that very first paycheck, I think four dollars forty-seven cents or something. My dad said, "Look, here's the deal." Here's what you need to do. You need to think about your future all the time, the investment, the money that you've already got, and what you want to use in the future to make your life better. He said, I suggest you take half of that money and always, always save that for tomorrow. Use half of what you got today should you want to, but invest in your future always. And I started putting away money 
I mean, in a sock drawer, to be honest, just like other people. It wasn't under a mattress or in a sock, but it was literally in my sock drawer. It had a little bundle of you know dollar bills that would grow and grow and grow. And it, that that policy really stuck with me uh, day after day, month, week, years later. I mean, it wasn't until I joined the military when I was 20 years old in 1993 uh, when uh, I learned another valuable lesson from him, and that was all about investing in mutual funds and RRSPs here. And that took me to where I am today. To be honest, I mean, I, I would not be able to do the things I do with my personal business here online or my previous business in the military as a pilot without all of those values that my dad gave to me. And it all revolves around finance. You are one blessed man to have um, a stepdad in your life like that. Uh, many of us. Um, don't have that. Um, my my late husband was blessed with that. Uh, his dad actually uh, retired as a single star general from the Air National Guard. So a little something in common with you. Maybe there's something in that. Um, but uh, he was my my late husband was blessed. I was blessed marrying this man who was also like you um, raised up to uh, have that kind of wisdom, that oversight, that training relative to finances, and um, and also gifted, um, if you will, the the start of uh, a future debt free. That's absolutely invaluable. But not all of us um, have. Um, that blessing, but that's the beauty, I think, of what um, you can provide for us and for our viewers is that um, sort of the buck stops here. You know, we can address this. You know, we're adults now, and we can take that bull by the horn, so to speak, and we can change it now, and we can hand down to our children a different story. Can you hear me? Absolutely. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Go right ahead. So, yeah, I, I want to just jump back really quickly. So with that first job, we talked about how that brought me up until I got into the military, but the concept of the financial information that I got is only a part of it. Remember I talked about the pride in being, you know, kind and courteous to other people, but being proud of who you are and what it is that values you instill into other people? I think of that financial information that I gained as only a small percentage of it. A larger percentage is people being open to the information, taking it, absorbing it, believing in their heart, mind, and soul that it's a good thing, and then following up on it. You know, it's great to hear and listen. You can get books on finance anywhere, but if you really don't believe in your heart, mind, and soul that what that person is telling you is for your own benefit, you're really you're not going to absorb it. You're going to hear the words. It's going to go in one ear and out the other. And that's where my dad had a gift for being able to sit me down as a young boy and saying these things, looking to me into the eye and, and saying these things from his heart. And I knew that he wanted good for me. And and you can feel that from people. You really can't. You know when they're being honest. It's it's a it's an easy thing to see when people are being so kind and courteous, taking time out of their day, going out of their way, making their lifestyle revolve around other people. That's a good thing. That's why I ended up joining the military. After 22 years, I wish I could still do it. I mean, that's that was, I love to serve people. When I was a teenager, and, and you know the story, and I'll say it really quickly because it's kind of funny. It was high school, 16. I just got my license. My granddad came to congratulate me. We went to buy my very first car. I was so happy. I had saved all that money. I told you about my sock drawer for years. We went to a car dealership down the road, and there was this old, what was it, 1982 brown Volkswagen Rabbit. I mean, this thing was, it was death on wheels. It was ugly. It was brown. It had one wiper. It functioned. It worked. Got you from point A to B, but it was just, it was not the pride of the lot, you know, by a wide margin. It, was just, it just wasn't. The rest of my friends, who were a year older than me, all my friends, had Trans Ams, and, and one guy had a Corvette, a Camaro, you know, a red Camaro. Like red, right? That's what I wanted. I got an 82 brown Volkswagen Rabbit, you know, with a gas cap that you twist off. It looked like a pop bottle cap. Um, the, the deal was this. My dad said, here's the deal. Grandpa says this is a fantastic car. It's a money smart car. Here's your options. One, I'm going to give you half the money you need to buy that car at a half a percent interest lower than you can get at the bank. 
I said, well, dad, nobody's, nobody's dad actually lends the money with interest, right? That just doesn't happen. He said, in my house, it does. You have a choice. You can either have the car or you can't. Or you can go to the bank. You can ask for a loan, but they're going to ask for a co-signer. And he says, I'm not willing to do that for you. You know, you're good with money. You're a smart, good kid. You try real hard. But you know what? You've got to learn these values. So I went to the bank of dad. I got the loan. He covered half of it, which I did pay back at a half a percent interest better than the bank. So that's a cool, awesome lesson. The best part of the lesson was this. When I did eventually join the, the military, I was in the Navy, and I drove home in a really cool car that I had bought. It was a new Jaguar. And I went home. I'm not going to mention the name of the good friend of mine that had that, uh, that Camaro. But when I got home, and this was just a few years ago, my friend was driving that exact same car. Camaro and I'm telling you when I rolled past him about the same parking lot where I used to clean up garbage when I was 13 years old I rolled past in the Jaguar it was a very different world and all of the the mindset of finances came rolling back onto me and I really had to just get home and thank my dad for the umpteenth time you know over the years about you know all those values he instilled onto me about finances but that really hit home, and it's just it's just something else to drive by, you know, in a car that you really like, where well, your friends are still driving that that old busted thing from 1984 or whatever. So, good lesson from my dad there. <laughs> a total guy thing. <laughs> I guess it was a car thing. I don't know. That's awesome. <laughs> but but how cool that that you know your dad shared that with you. I mean, like like Emily says, not not everybody had that background. So moving forward past that, so now you've been in the service and you come into the online world. What obstacles did you find there, you know, because most people what stops them is the finances. But that that wouldn't have been an issue for you to get into any program because, you know, we all know how little you can spend or how much you can spend. But what were your next challenges that you had to overcome to uh, when you're going into business now for yourself? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. And I, I feel as though... I am a real minority in this whole industry. I really do, but I think what the secret to this is that it's a silent minority. I think we're really a majority, and that means people who have already had a job, who have already created an income, who are literally already getting by. I hear these horrible tales of people who come from stories of woe, you know, stories of despair and, and, and extreme debt, poverty, and looking to network marketing, internet marketing, our community in order to create you know a wealth that you know ten times supersedes where they come from I wasn't looking for that that's not why I got into this industry whatsoever at all at all at all um, I'll tell you this after 22 years in the military now as an officer as a pilot money isn't an issue in my life it really isn't I mean I, I'm 42 now and I'm retired I'm ret I can retire the rest of my life I've been been money wise money smart kind of courteous to other people and that's really set my future open and available to me so for the longest time when I first started Kathleen I felt like I was this this unique individual who came into this with money and people said you only get into this business if you're looking to generate you know money to get you out of a, a tough spot Steve why are you in this you're not financially in a tough spot no but I do believe that this this entire industry gives you so many other opportunities besides an income. I love serving other people. I love teaching, driving, motivating, inspiring people. And if I'm no longer able to do it in front of a battalion of 20,000 people, then I'm going to do it on a webcam in front of 20 million people. I'm going to find a way to drive and inspire and motivate people no matter what. So to me, the money side of all of this, the income that we can generate using this industry is really, to me, a secondary thing. It's a perk. It's cool. It affords me extra time freedom to do this sort of thing every day. You know, it's a good thing. But I do believe that I'm not so much a minority anymore. When I hear about other people, the both of you come from great backgrounds as well. We're all sharing the same industry. You may have struggled years and beyond, but last year we were all doing okay. We do this because we want to. We do this because we find that it offers 
many more levels of expanding our life, paving that road you know, for the future that we want to go down, seeing ourselves at point B while we're sitting at point A, knowing that this industry is going to get us there. That's kind of why I do it. I have to agree with you. The, the whole it, it, it is far more than, than the whole money thing. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's, um, it's a way to meet people. People mm -hmm. that, that have their values. Um, I think about the events that we have been to. And that camaraderie that builds and you build those relationships that truly can turn into a lifetime of um, true friends. I mean, uh, you know, people say you can usually count the number of, of your true friends on one hand. And but I think in this industry that you can can have far more than that if you're your authentic. Mm -hmm. And you you come out as who you really are, and, and that you truly are there to help people. It doesn't matter, you know, where they're at. It's it's lifting people up. I, I that's what I find inspiring is being able to lift others up. And that's kind of what I hear you saying is that it's what you're about. <laughs> yeah, here here's something inspiring for you that that'll that'll break a few hearts. But when I uh, last year, I think it was January, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. So that's what sort of brought my military career flying to a screeching halt. Knowing that, you know, that was kind of the end of that journey for me after 22 years. That was a really tough pill to swallow. It was hard. And I went online for months looking for another way to keep that level of lifestyle that I have crafted for my family using all of the financial wisdom that I've gained over the years. And of course, you know, the fantastic job of being a pilot. I mean, that's good salary. It's great. It set me up. And I was able to save wisely. So not being able to perform that function anymore left me at home for a long time, not really able to do much of anything other than, you know, incline myself in bed or on the, on the uh, couch downstairs. That's all I could do for months, which is why I became friends with, you know, the laptop. I really was not an internet, you know, uh, superstar ever. I never experienced the online world like I have now for the past year. And it started with meeting people online, learning about the concept of internet marketing, thinking that I could generate any kind of income whatsoever to offset the loss of my career from my home just blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. Here's the tough part. Here's the, here's the craziest. So after shedding blood, sweat, and tears with people in the military for 22 years in the Gulf, nine and a half months deployed, coming home, being diagnosed with cancer, that checked on me daily were the friends that I made that you just talked about at the live events that we've been to and both of you. It's the people that I've met online. I love my fellow brethren in the military. My brother in arms, they're good people, but believe it or not, because I don't function on that level anymore, nobody has called me in almost a year. Uh, no emails, no texts, nothing. It's, it's everyone that I have met in the online community. It's real people. It, it's, it's unbelievable. But this, this is, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. You would think it would be the other way around. I was shocked to find that every day it's good people online. These are the relationships that I want to have now. This is where I will spend all of my days. And this is where I would love to bring all the rest of my friends from the military when they retire. Because, my gosh, it doesn't get any better, right? Look at the small <laughs> smiles. <laughs> It's true, and you know, uh, that is, uh, I thank you for that lead-in, that is why I'm writing my book, uh, Wake Up People, you know, increase your income, keep your wealth, and create the lifestyle of your dreams. I knew nothing of this lifestyle a year ago, well, just a little over a year ago I came online, I wasn't in social media, I, I went on just looking, how do I market my tax planning business, how can I get this beautiful information that's so valuable um, down to the people that need it, and, um, but what I found was this whole world, this whole online business world, and um, the opportunities are just amazing. And I think of just a year ago, just a year and a half ago, I knew nothing about this. And I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty educated, and I'm, I'm pretty well read, and you know, I certainly was well on the in, 
you know, internet, but just not social media and just not conducting business. But this is huge, and it's getting more so. And so when I, and it breaks my heart when I see, either through my client base or in my community or my family or friends, what have you, people that, um, are struggling in this economy, you know, this, this great recession. They say that it's over, but that's not true. That's not what I'm seeing in my client base. There's still these personal great recessions going on. And um, people who don't realize that there are options or believe these myths that, um, oh, that's all, you know, a scam and, and that kind of thing. But that is not what I'm finding. And now that I'm becoming the CPA to many of these online entrepreneurs, uh, these network marketers, um, and other individuals who are bringing their skill set um, to the online world and making it available, learning the craft of marketing, there really is good money to be made, um, as as you say. So, of course, we want to bring more people into here. And I often hear that um, social media, they're not real friendships. Well, they, they actually, they are. Mm -hmm. And we've actually met... Um, several times we've gone to the same events and we have as you say we have a real connectivity we have a real relationship we have um, we have our hearts have met you know Kathleen and I we really discovered each other on the last day it was an extra day of that first um, Phoenix trip we took and we just spent the day just totally sharing um, our histories and our background. We were like friends for life, and now look, like, like almost like a year later, right? Here we are. Like we gotta work yeah. together. We gotta do something together. You know what? I'll I'll mention this really quickly about that. You mentioned the last day of a live event, and I'll say what's really important about that to me, and why people might be able to understand what you mean by that. Whenever I deploy for a month or, or six months or nine, that last day before I go, before I leave, I hold my wife so close and my little girl, I don't want to leave. When I visit my family at Christmas time and it's the day before I have to fly back here, it's that last day where you, you just don't want it to end. You know, it's it's all built up to that those 24 hours for some reason. It's like it's almost like anything. It's like Christmas Eve. You know, it's the as you get dressed for trick or treating. You think about all those really big events. You know, the birth of a child, or when you're about to graduate school, or you know, the first time I ever flew solo. It's that last little bit of time. And if you could put that much energy into every single day, could you imagine the chicklets that would be showing around the universe, busting out of cheeks? Everybody would have that feeling that that day was so special that you would never want it to end. So when I go into the future, when I go forward into these live events and meet people from now on, even talking on the phone or even this hangout, I want them all to feel like you never want it to end. You know, you want that same je ne sais quoi, that feeling that it's magic, that it's, you know, you just can't go anymore without it. And that's, that's the magic of that last day that people just say, oh, there's something unique about putting that, you know, getting that flight return home the day after, that extra day. People always tell you to do that. Why is that? Well, that's the reason why. Kind of funky, yeah. huh? It, it's kind of like an endorphin in your system, and and it's like there's something there to, to, to help hold you over until the next time when you can be together again. And it, it you come home, and it lasts for a little bit of time, that, that whole feeling of being around people that you feel so loved. I, I can't explain it any other way. It's just there's this immense um, gathering and um, yeah, it, it is. It's, it's very, very, very special. Yeah, well, we are in the trenches together, and um, so we we have that camaraderie that comes through persevering, having goals, having hearts, stepping out in ways that maybe aren't common, and so we 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 do have some kind of glue or connectivity there. And so when we are at these events, and they're intense, so you're really learning, but you also have the social time, the networking time. And I'm just, I'm seeing, I'm thinking, of, I'm seeing you swing on a pole here. <laughs> when you, you, we were on the street and um, you had 
picked up some kind of advertisements. They were trying to hand them out to everybody passing by. <laughs> it was just hysterical, and I think I have footage on that. And but it's like a, with our families when we um, when we're all grown up and we think back, we don't necessarily remember every single day, um, but we do remember like the family trips, the vacations, or special occasions at an aunt or uncle's house or what have you, grandma's house. And so these events or whatever, these times together, they're like that, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. it's and I can remember the uh, stepping into the hotel lobby the first time and seeing the people that I'd seen digitally, their faces represented flat on a screen in my home, strangely enough, right, for the very first time live. Like people just stepping up from behind a pillar or sitting down in a leather chair when we walked into that uh, the restaurant area. Just, you know, seeing the, even some of the leaders take the stages for the first time, you know, even the, not a stage, a little platform, but still you're like, wow, it's all real. Everything... Everything is just magnified 10,000-fold, and I think that's where a lot of, um, a lot of the spark, the, the, the fire that comes from that motivates us is from these live events, and we talk about it all the time, and it took me going to my first live event to actually believe it and feel it and understand it. Now I can put it into words. Now I can really promote it, sell it, get people to understand what it means because they see the conviction and hear it. They can go, wow, he's not kidding. This isn't a joke. It's real. It is real. Here's how I can tell you that. Come and hang out with me for an hour. You'll be laughing, having a good time. I guarantee it. We can sit. You think this is funny? You should see, listen. Pull up a couch one time with me, right? Grab a coffee, right? You wouldn't want to leave. I'm telling you, because that's the magic of hanging out. I think how cool was the breakfasts that we got to have together, right? Oh, to have totally breakfast. Right. We would get more done in half an hour, you know, than, than we could sitting online trying to draft up stuff in my notepad, trying to talk it, work it through, share the screen, all that stuff. So I'm telling you, wait for the next one. I can't wait. I'm, I'm excited. Fun. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a blast. <laughs> yeah. we, we, it's going to be a blast. And we've learned enough um, in the past to really now make more of it and to really capitalize on the time together, the energy together, and um, and really just grow. So that mastermind concept, we talk about the breakfast and getting so much done, that's really what was happening. You know, we were really just... Um, uh, feeding off of one each one another, or somebody always seemed to have the right word to say uh, when we were strategizing on something. So that was pretty, um, pretty fantastic. The internet's great, but it's hard to intervene when you you know how you can read people's personality when you're you know in person with them. It's very difficult when you're looking into a little dot, a little screen on a webcam, or, or you know you can't get that. So when we are in in person, we can see each other's body language, and we know when we're ready to to give up some information, and when everyone's listening and we're engaged, and what you're saying isn't really working. You know, I've been on hangouts really where I've kind of just gone like this, you know, and then I had to come back, oh my gosh, there's people talking, am I on a hangout? I'm, I'm focused right now, you know, because it just isn't working. So, but a, but that live event that, that we were at and the ones we're going to go to, that is where the magic is going to come from. And I, and I want to remind people that every second we're there together, okay, we have to experience this like it's the last day. You've got to feel like you never want it to end because that's where the real magic comes out of, and I know it's going to happen. Absolutely, it absolutely is. Yep, and it also has um, it. It renews that desire, and so when we look at um, concepts like in the Think and Grow Rich, uh, when we have those definitive major purposes, uh, when we have that kind of focus, the beauty and the intensity and the energy that we get at these events, it, it just multiplies all of those things. So Steve, relative to finances, would you then say that um, these uh, events, um, they really can be a foundation for just like platforming off a, a, a sales strategy, a, a, an attack, if you will? Absolutely. Um, when I 
I, I had a concept, an idea of what network and internet marketing was before I showed up at my first live event. I didn't know what to expect when I got there, but I'll tell you when I had left, when I came home, I had a completely new realization of how far I could really go in this on so many levels, not just making videos or not just making graphics online or blog posts or Facebook posts, but I realized that every single one of us has the potential inside of us already there to just flip the switch, and by that I mean literally the on switch of a microphone and broadcast your ideas that you know to be good, to be right, to be wholesome for other people, to help them, to guide them. And if you don't have them, you can learn them. Hang out with one of us with me, read a book, read some knowledge. Give that back to people. Let them know they deserve it. But the live event for me, the first one I went to, just solidified in my head that I'm the right guy for the job. I chose the right profession. I am an internet network marketing professional, and I'm good at it. And I'm going to do it for a long, long time because I not only am good at it, but I enjoy it. And people tell me that they like to be a part of this with me. So that reminds me that you know live events are, are fantastic for that, to put you in your place, to remind you that you can do everything that you see the one person doing on stage while the thousands of other people are sitting down in the chairs. Each one of them is going to have their turn. Absolutely. Right. And um, so, Steve, you've been financially uh, successful in online marketing in a relatively short period of time. What would you attribute that success to? Because I think you just gave us uh, some tips, the fact that you identified that, hey, you can do this, you're good at this, and um, you received that and you went with it. Not everyone has, um, has that kind of confidence, though. What, what could you offer our viewers as regards to that? Well, uh, hope in the sense that it's going to come out when you choose to bring it, pull it out, yank it out of you, that's your business. If I find you, I'll pull it out of you myself because everybody already has it in them. For so many years, I sat quiet, if you can believe this, below the <laughs> waterline on a ship sailing the seas, not talking to anybody. I was the most quiet guy in the military. Honestly, it was like ridiculous. Uh, I, I had no voice. I had no passion, no desire. I didn't want to be that loud in your face kind of guy. My hands move around. I feel like I'm French. You know, I didn't want to be that, that guy. But I can't really put my finger on what happened. But I remember a friend of mine said to me, Steve, you seem like a very cool, unique person. That there's something inside of you that for some reason you're just choosing not to let out. And I kind of said, you know what? She's right. My friend Tara said, you know what, Tara? You're right. I'm, what am I not bringing up? She says, here's the deal. Here's where you can start to change things. Tomorrow when you go to work on the ship, I just want you to put your head up instead of putting it down, looking down at the flats, you know, the hallway on the ship. Look up at the first three people that walk past you in the morning and just say good morning. Give them a nod. Show them a smile. And that's it. And then for the rest of the day, if you want to go back into your shell, that's cool. And the next day, I want you to add one more person onto that pile. There's only 300 people on the ship, you know, 299. So by the end of the year, I knew everybody on the ship and everybody knew me. I just got out of that shell by taking a small step the very first time, building on it consistently. Every day I just took a little bit more action into making myself you know, more present in front of people. And then I found out, hey, I'm actually kind of funny, and people do like that. They're, they like me. I'm a ridiculously funny guy. So I brought that into my daily life. Everywhere I go, I flop my hands around. I shove my teeth a lot. I move my eyes around. And people are like, that's that's funny. When you're that animated, people want to be a part of that. So if you're sitting at home watching this by yourself, move your face around. Get excited. Twist in your chair. Do something today. Go out. Go for a walk. Say hi to three people, right? And you'll be surprised. If one person out of those three say hi back, it's 33%. What kind of return on investment is that? That's a really good one. Emily, she'll tell you. Awesome. <laughs> it works with us, I'll tell you. <laughs> but, you know, and Kathleen and I had that conversation the other day, Kathleen, about becoming, um, and you just step into the person that is inside, but just hasn't really made the appearance yet. Just hasn't presented itself. Kathleen, and I, and I, exactly. And I think a lot of people, and I think this is where some encouragement needs is that we forget that we've moved on from childhood. We, we carry forth all those 
little sayings or somebody may have called you a name or put you down or bullied you in some way growing up and you carry that right into adulthood so much and you don't even know that you've done it until it's like it's time to step into who you really are and it's okay to say you've left that all behind I mean they've moved on with their life and they're probably not even giving you another thought and here you are wasted all this energy and time thinking oh my god what will they think and say now well who cares but but we cared for a long time for any of us that have held that in our hearts and in our minds and and carried that misconception and misbelief that um, they were still watching us. It, it's it's we do the darndest things to ourselves. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You know what? When when I stepped out of that shell, every day got better from there forward. I just had to make that initial step, that first decision, and as soon as you do you realize that every day is going to get better and you're right that nobody in your past cares none of the people that ever did me wrong thinks twice about it today and if they do they would have wrote me or texted me give me a message to say sorry for all the terrible things they did but they didn't get that message or that email so clearly they don't care you know in that so why should i you know it's not a matter of hey it's not a matter of being discourteous to people saying i don't care about them i do i wish everyone well the point is is I'm never going to get held back ever again by anything in the history of the universe. And nothing should ever hold anyone back, ever. Be kind and courteous to the people out there and you will get the exact same thing back. If you smile, people will smile back. I listen to audios every day. I go for a five-mile walk around here four times around the block. And I, keep, I smile at lamp posts, you know, mailboxes. I smell at everything I can smile at, I do. And every once in a while, some guy would drive by in a car and he'll look at me and he'll be like, hey, right on, hey, I'm waiting for him to pull over and ask me what I do for a living and I'm going to bring him here. You know? It's just it's that easy. It's just a smile. Well, this is one of the things that I truly love about the online community is it really is much more um, open and accepting. It's really a space that generally, at least from those of us that are conducting business here, those of us that are looking to connect with people through social media, we really are engaging. And what we're finding is the authenticity of ourselves by just being out here and being true to ourselves and being true to the person that we're engaging with, that um, it is one of the great joys of being online to be able to fully blossom and be who you are and just have people just accept you for that it is who wouldn't want to come out here and, and grow it is like great and Steve no one does it better than you, you know? I don't know if I can get away with that <laughs> you know what the real secret is is if you have people that want to listen to you then you you will want to talk that's just it if you give me the time I will tell you everything that I know about everything because your time is valuable I appreciate the fact that after having been you know diagnosed with cancer knowing as I talked about with you earlier that that, that clock is running out maybe faster than for some people my time is incredibly valuable and I want to spend the time that I have doing good things creating a legacy or at least a mindset inside some people that deserve it that is going to last a little bit of me that's going to be out there for all time so after I'm long gone people say hey remember that hangout that weird funny guy Biznut remember Steve Barnes that's a weird guy I remember that guy I met him one time he had a microphone he was on the stage what a weird dude but man now I laughed he was funny I learned some stuff from him I made a squeeze page got a sale and I woke up happy one day I smiled got 33 percent smiles back <laughs> it's a great thing right so time is valuable Give people your time, and they will give you theirs. And that's the magic of, of this whole thing is that now that we have this hangout out there, it's going to be replayed in front of billions of people for all time. So it'll be the year 30,000, and people will still be looking at all three of us going, now there's a cool group of people I wish I got hung out with back in 2014. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And we are, too, by the way. We have a lot of fun when we get together. We sure do. And um, I, I like that idea, uh, Steve, of the of the legacy and being able to leave these tidbits. And I think 
um, you're a great one for that. Not only are you animated, not only does that so appeal to so many of us, but you know, it's also just so um, uh, natural. It's so grounded. It's so uh, relatable. And to think that we can come out of our shell just by starting off with maybe smiling with three people. So that might translate online. Um, what would that translate, Steve, online? What would you say that does for the newbie who's, who sees this, who says, you know, I'm going to go out and find out what they're talking about. Um, turn off the TV, you know, put away the, the games, and just go out and find out what they're doing. What, what uh, tidbits would you, would you offer? Well, I'd say they're already off to a good start, and this is how I can guarantee that you have already put yourself in the right frame of mind because if you're hearing any of us speak right now you're watching this which means you're already taking the first step and that's to gain some knowledge right understand about the community about the people that are out there who it is you're going to work with and who you want to work with in this industry it's not just about a business or a company or sales you know or generating leads or closing people all that stuff it's about having a relationship which we are together right now the three of us together are having a relationship and we're engaging with you the viewer watching right now that's the very first step okay is to be able to take in some of this information that's the big takeaway I remember when I first started I'm a very very professional analytical guy as you know a helicopter pilot I have to be strategic and tactical all the time I hit up internet marketing I put the webcam away I said no 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 I'm not putting myself out there until I understand everything about the internet world everything every book every video I was eating the stuff up realizing that I wasn't engaging with people I didn't have any relationships built I wasn't able to take in a plethora of knowledge from people like us who are willing to teach and talk to you you know all the time give you this kind of information that you can't get from a book you know you can read all the books and watch YouTube videos all day long but you're only going to get so much from that. So by taking in the information that we're giving you, by me being able to stop that, you know, that strategic tactical method of trying to keep myself out of the internet world before I learned everything, because you can never know everything. You just can't do it. It's a journey. And if you can understand the concept that this whole journey of getting from point A to point B, wherever it is you have your mindset in the future, half the fun is getting there. So don't always have your eye on the prize thinking that's the end result. Make small steps, small goals along the way, achieve those goals, and move to the next milestone. This is just a drop in the bucket for me today. Hanging out with you guys is just one of the cool things I get to do. You guys, this is I'm just one of the drops in your bucket, and I'm just one of the cool things that you guys get to do today. So, you know? And I think it's really cool that you, you touched on that, Steve, because it is all about the people. You know... People jump from product to product in this industry thinking, well, this, this is going to be the thing. This is the, this is the next big gold mine or whatever. When really, all you need to do is invest in people. In, invest in showing and caring about other people. And that's, that's the product. The product is the people. The, what there's... What, the company they're with or the, what they're selling is like frosting on a cake. But when you invest in that in people, then you, that's your gold mine. Because that's what's going to be there. That's that's what's going to give you everything that feeds you inside and out. You know. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you for saying that because. That was the, the, the most condensed version I have ever heard of, you know, my cartoon act of saying that your company, your business is just a platform. I'm sure Emily will teach you all the ins and outs of that, but your business is just a platform for you to stand on to do your work. People are the product, okay? You can own the, the fanciest company, the best business, okay? You can have the coolest car in your driveway, but if you don't put gas in it, if you don't put people into that system, that machine, it's not going to go anywhere. So that's the – I'm glad you said that, that people are the product. At the end of the day, truly, I can ask anybody what it is they want in life. People ask me. I say, I want time. I want more time. How am I going to get that? I'm not going to get it by 
you know, doing anything other than creating an income that allows me to offset what I'm doing, that, you know, that I need to do to, to pay the bills or to, to, to have a life, to go places, to experience things. It all takes money. It takes finances. You need to be smart about it. So I'm using the internet marketing world to generate that income that I've offset from being a pilot, which I can't do anymore. That affords me the time freedom to do things which is hang out with cool people like you guys. That's the whole deal behind this, right? One word for me, it's time. I want more of it. I'm using this career, this this business to, to generate that for me. And where does all of that fuel come from? Where does all of that money come from? Where does the income come from? It comes from the people. It comes from their pockets. You just can't, there's no other way to get around it. You can't say, well, Steve, you're going to borrow that money from a bank and that's going to come into your business and that's going to thrive and grow. No, it comes from the people that want to be a part of your community, your team, your network, your business, that platform that you stand on. They see that and say, cool, I want to do that what she's doing. I want to do what he's doing. That looks fun. It looks friendly. It looks it looks great. There's so many strategic advantages to having a business. It's unbelievable. And if you're in this only for the money, you'll fail because it's not about generating the money. It's about generating the relationships which lead to people coming and building your team, which eventually builds an income. Anyway, so Perfect. you know, the product is the people. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it really it is. It's um, it's coming into this space and having a heart for people and seeing what their needs are and meeting those needs and being a servant. So, um, money uh, is just a tool. You know, it's just the medium that we use um, to you know conduct our businesses. So, you know. I'm a CPA. I'm a certified tax coach. Um, people need tax work done. They need planning done. They're starting up a business. They have a need. And so really the connection is it's people that have the need. And um, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, I have a skill set. And I can bring that skill set to the people uh, and meet their needs. And in that, it's a relationship. I'll tell you, one thing I love about my um, industry is that um, it is it is definitely the people. And every tax season comes around, and I may not have seen some of these clients for a whole year, but when you do, ah, you know, it's like a family reunion. You know, it's just, it's it's so happy to see them. Um, you're catching up on their life, regard, you know, whatever that may look like, and. Um, and you know it's wonderful. I just got to open the package today from one of my clients. I'm doing an extension on, and she put a little note on there. Hadn't heard from me. Here's my stuff, and said, you know, oh, da 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 da, a little personal stuff there. And it was like, oh, it touched my heart. One that sh we have that personal relationship, and it goes mutual. And so we are blessed in the network uh, marketing realm uh, that we know each other in, because that's exactly what we're doing. We are meeting um, people and we are, are putting people together where they need to go and helping them and in the process um, founding a family and, and uh, uh, friend relationships that are just absolutely phenomenal. So it's a people business we're in um, and really at the end of the day like they say, it's not what's in your bank account that matters. It's the relationships you have, and that's the truth of our our lives. And those that do this well and really care for people, those are the ones that do actually have a, a larger bank account. Wouldn't you agree? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's 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 a given. Um, there is it's not a push button industry. The people that give you the idea that this is something that you can come into and not talk to people, don't really know what they're doing, they don't know what they're talking about, and I don't think the time freedom they have is a direct reflection of the income they're generating, which is not a direct reflection of the relationships they have. You know what I mean? It's really not. You're right. If you're a people person or if you're willing to talk to people either on the phone or have a conversation through a messaging system, whether it's Facebook, it doesn't matter, or hang out like this on, on, on Google, whatever, that is where you're going to build your business. Okay, it's all about having the right company, the right business that, that you can use that represents you as a person. But at the end of the day, it's the people. It's the people. 
dang it. Right? That's perfect. And, and in, out of respect for people's times, I think that's a wonderful note to end this, this great hangout on. <laughs> I quite agree. Steve, thank you so very much, sir. Well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to have me on here. Yes, we talked about time's valuable. Yours is, mine is, and so is the viewers. So thank you, ladies, very much for having me today. I'm very, very proud to have been here. Thank, thank you, Steve. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thanks.